Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to this week's show. I'm your host, Nazita Shinsky, and you're listening to Live Without Limits. Today's show, we're going to be talking about how to find your next side hustle. And why are we talking about this? Because in today's environment, there's no such thing as a nine-to-five job working with a company that's long-term. And... Back when I entered the workforce in the 80s, you still had the corporate jobs, you still had a lot of the state jobs, you still had the federal jobs, and they pay good and you were left with good benefits upon retirement. But because I have a disability, I found that I was still basically excluded from the job market because I was in the workforce. 12 years before the Americans with Disabilities Act became law, and in there you had that clause with under the Department of Justice, if you felt that you were being discriminated against when competing for jobs, then you had the right to sue for equal opportunity. So here's what we're going to talk about how to find your next side side hustle and make sure it's the right one for you. If you remember as a teenager, you went out and you did babysitting. You went out and you cut lawns. You went out and you walked dogs for a living. Well, today those are called side hustles and they're some of the best ways to make extra money. So, first, Let me just say that I can actually really hate the word hustle. It sounds scammy, and there's nothing scammy about what I'm about to teach you. But it's part of the lexicon. And when I say side hustle, you know what I mean. A job outside of your regular gig. Or if you don't have a regular gig, something that's not a nine-to-five job. Second, I know this would be sexier if I was promising you a strategy for working four hours a year and spending the rest of your time at Disneyland or something like that. There might be a way to do that. If there is, I don't know. What is? And to be honest, I don't want to know. I love my work. I sometimes just look around at my life and marvel at the fact that I figured out how to get myself to this place. When I was in my early 20s, I was earning $12,000 a year. Today, I'm a writer and a teacher on my own terms, earning $100,000 a year. My experience is that working for yourself is hard, but good. If you're looking for some magic means that will make it easy or non-existent, this is not this is not for you. I don't have that. No matter whether you're doing affiliate marketing or whether you're working for Lyft or whatever, it's still a job that you have to put time and effort into. For many people, especially older people who are looking to make extra income and they go to work for less, they find that if they want to really make good money, they got to put in 60 hours or more. But here's the kicker. They have to have a car. 
they have to have a chauffeur's license, and they have to be good drivers. But they have to be on the road constantly if they want to pick up those lifts. It's not like working for a taxi where you can sit and park your car in between rides and wait for the calls to come in. You have to literally be within inches or feet of where that pickup is before it clicks in on the app and assigned to you. My experience is that working for yourself is hard, but good. But I do know how to hustle as much as I dislike the word because I think I may have been born hustling. It's in my blood, inherited from my dad, who has always been allergic to traditional jobs. In fact, my father happened to have been a lawyer, so he was always self-employed. He never worked for anyone else. He always had his own office. I never liked working for someone else. It makes me feel claustrophobic. Here's something else, that my personality is such that I constantly like to move. By working for myself, I can work in chunks of time and things that work for me, and then I get up and I move around. When I'm in a traditional job, I literally have to be sitting at the desk, on the phone, or whatever I'm doing, and looking at the same four walls. But if I get up and move around, then when I come back and I, I'm more energized and I'm more focused on what I'm doing. After 25 years of finding my own work, my own way, I've learned some things about how to do it. Side hustle refers to freelancing, the gig economy, driving for Uber or Lyft, renting space via Airbnb, working for a food delivery service, or so on. Selling online, small community-based businesses like babysitting and dog walking, and pretty much any kind of home-based self-employment. Here's what hustling means to me. My time is my own. For better or for worse, it means that even when I work with someone else, that work is a service to my creative work. In other words, when I had to go find a job that gives me a paycheck, that's a side hustle to my real work. It means that I get to be a writer all the time and not just in the space in between. It's a mind game, I guess. But it works for me. Here's what hustling does not mean to pretty much anyone who has actually done it. Easy days. It's hard work. And you have to learn how to balance your life because it's really difficult to turn work off when you don't have a boss. And you're in responsible for the whole Shabang. For me, it started when I was single and with a and who I had to figure out how to earn a living without a regular job. Eventually, it just became my thing. I did not decide one day to start a fantastic business that I'm in love with. And it was all rainbows and roses from there. I started out doing work I didn't love quite as much. I started out writing for a lot less money and a lot less of the time. And let me just back up. Now, I've always been someone that, teaches people about careers. Some of the side hustles that I've done is I've got courses that sit on Skillshare 
or Udemy, and they bring me in an income while at the same time I also do my other side hustle gigs. And I'm a career and personal development strategy coach. And what that means is if you're in a business where you need to put together a mission statement or an action plan on how you're going to take your idea or your business plan from where you are to get it up and running and really make it work, then what we can do is show you how. And today, everything, even if you have a brick and mortar store, you need to have an online presence. And that means understanding and using digital marketing to grow your business. You might start out driving for Uber while you wait for your homemade cupcake business to catch on. Is what I'm saying? Or babysitting while you learn to write novels. Or dog walking while you build up your dog grooming gig. Here's my formula to finding out your next side hustle. Develop after 25 years of living it. Figure out your what and why. You might think you know this already. I mean, duh. You want a side hustle because you want to make some money? What other reason? But it will help if you can really figure out exactly what you need your side hustle to do for you and why. And what this is, is when you're working from home, you literally need to know what it is and the reasons for which you are working. Why? Because if you understand all of that, then it can put you exactly where you want to be with your business and it can literally help you focus in on what you need to do. So instead of something vague like I need to figure out a way to make money, try to come up with a real concrete goal. Something like, I need to earn $250 a month to cover my car payment. I need to earn $500 a month to replace my reduced hours at my day job. I need to earn $1,500 a month to replace my prime time job. I need to earn $3,000 this year to take a trip to visit my family. Knowing exactly what you need will make it easier for you to have reasonable expectations for your efforts, and it will give you something real to work towards. I want to make some money. It's so vague and open-ended that it practically guarantees failure. Make a list of your skills and assets. Get out a notebook and start listing every skill that you possess that might possibly lend itself to a side hustle. Beware, though, that this task might give you white paper syndrome. You might freeze up and decide that you don't have any marketable skills at all. Just take a breath. I promise that you do. Not only that, but I bet you have more skills than you think you do. Now, let me backtrack and tell you a story. When I lost my job with the state and I literally could not find anything, what I did was I looked at my education. I looked at my experience. I looked at what it is that I always wanted to do. And that's how I set my goals on my business. And initially, what I came up with was because I had training in psychodrama and I had training in psych 
transactional analysis, that what I wanted to do was offer group therapy sessions. Well, I didn't exactly have the master's, and I didn't exactly have the Ph.D. So that meant that going to the mental health centers and offering my services or a referral base wasn't going to work. So it evolved into becoming a professional speaker and trainer. And because I had a background in mental health and assessment, I found Personal Dynamics Institute, and I found John Geyer and Associates, which eventually became Performac, then Personal Dynamics Institute, and Performac merged and were bought out by Carlson Companies. But what they offered was assessment profiles that can be administered directly to the individual and help you in understandable terms what your behavior patterns are, where your strengths lie, where your weaknesses lie. And also, if you look at the Strong Campbell, then what that does is it tells you in what and gives you an idea of in what field you have an interest in, and it helps you gear that focus and work with your, your strengths to come up with what it is that you truly want to do. And in essence, that is around the time of seminar companies and you you had to get on the speaker circuit where you had to have a media kit to send out. Well, today, you can do all of that directly from home with webinars, with teleseminars, and you can use social media to literally help promote yourself and your programs. Think about every job you ever had, every scrap of experience you gained over the course of your life. Even if you've never had a job before, you've probably had life experiences that translate into marketable skills. Here are some thinking points to get you started. What were you good at in high school? What did you study in college, even if it was just one community college class? What jobs have you had? Do you speak a language other than English? Are you strong and healthy? This is a skill. Write it down. What do you know how to do well? What do you have a knack for? What do you, your friends ask you to help them with? What are you always ask for your advice about? Take a look at your bookshelf. What have you studied on your own? Do you have a family business? Think about your past experiences. And don't spend any time right now thinking about how any of it will translate to a hustle. Just write it down. One thing to remember, you only need to be a tiny bit ahead of someone to teach them something. My older sister earned a little money teaching piano lessons all through college. She never even played the piano, but she played the clarinet in high school, and she could read music. That's all that was required to teach five-year-olds. Also, list any assets you have. If you have a car, a cell phone, any kind of license or degree, put them on your list. Think about Anyone you know who might help you get started with a side hustle. For instance, if you are close to someone who might be willing to help you with some aspect of your hustle to teach how to do something that you need to know how to do. And think about your schedule and your needs. Remember this, it's all 
up to you. And because today everything is about working from home, here are some other thoughts that you need to think about. For instance, with your side hustle, what is it that you plan to do? And you need to make sure that when you're living at home, you have a room that you can literally set up as your office and put at your times that you're at work on there so that no one disturbs you. And make sure that you let them know that when those hours are over, your time is theirs and you will plan out and you will do the things that will help each of you to be focused and build on your career and your support. And this will help them to understand that your time is just as valuable as theirs. How much time do you have to invest in your side offer? If you don't get a day job that eats 60 hours a week, there's no way you're going to be able to put another 60 into building a complicated side business from scratch. You're going to need something that's less time consuming. Maybe you'll make and you'll want to take a freelance client doing the same work as your day job, which might eventually lead to shifting away from working so many hours for someone else. Here's a thought to think about. When you work for someone else, you're making them rich. But when you work for yourself, you're making yourself rich. If you've got more time and some resources, but you need money quickly, that's a whole different set of considerations. You want something that will let you put hours in, but with a quick return. Maybe something in the gig economy, like driving for Uber and Lyft, or renting out part of your house to BNB. I've got another source of income, and you're not desperate for the money right away. You might have the time and resources to develop a slower burn side hustle. You'd be in a good position for starting a business selling handcrafted items on Etsy, for instance. Pay attention to what other people need and other people want. This is important to recognize. It's not enough to only think about what you want to do. You need to look around you and notice the empty spaces that you can fill. It's not just about dire, obvious needs. I mean, those are good. If your community really needs someone to fill a direct need that you have the ability to fill, by all means, do it. And what we're talking about here is think about it this way. When you need to be able to fill a niche within the industry, and why is it important to look at it as the niche within an industry? Simple, that there's always something that needs to be filled at all times where people are being left out. In fact, I have a friend that's a chiropractor, and she gave up her office to work from home, that rather in having her clients come to her, she saw a niche where there were people who needed chiropractic work but were unable to come into the office, so she goes to them. Put it all together. Once you know what you need from your side hustle, spend some time looking at your list of skills and assets. Try to think outside of the box. Here are some of the side hustles 
I've worked this in the past. Document preparation. Skills needed, writing. Patience with people in crisis. Waiting in line. Assets. My dad could teach me how to do the preparation. I own the car that would allow me to go to the courthouse to file documents. I was young and energetic enough to deal with all that standing in line. My time, I prepared divorces and bankruptcies for people to file without lawyers. Each one took me about two hours and I usually had four clients a week, each earning me $200. I started earning money nearly immediately after posting an ad in a local weekly newspaper. Online vintage clothing seller. Skills needed, a good eye for vintage clothes at thrift stores, basic sewing skills, photography, computer skills, copywriting, and the assets you need a computer, a camera, a car, a sewing machine, a washing machine. And your time, this job could take as little or as much time as I had to give it. At a bare minimum, I needed to shop, clean, and repair the items, photograph and list the items, and then prepare and ship them when they sold. I started earning money quickly after making my first eBay listing, but didn't turn a profit for a couple of months. Etsy shop owner. Skills needed, crafting ability, photography, computer skills, copywriting marketing, assets, a computer, a camera, a car, basic tools for sewing machine, and an email list. Freelance writing and blogging. Now, let me also tell you that if you're looking for some of the 10 best jobs and opportunities for 2020, the list that I'm giving you are some great ways to see the opportunity to earn extra money to go from there. Freelance writing or blogging. Skills needed, writing, marketing. Assets needed, a computer, an email list a college education. The time, it varies widely. If you blog, you can just write and post without worrying about an editor. If you want a freelance for publications, you'll need to pitch story ideas, and that can take months. It can take months or even years to start making significant amount of money. And here's another thing to think about. There's Medium.com and there's iWriter.com. On Medium, you can go and post articles and whenever someone reads your articles and they clap, you get paid on it. On iWriter, you can bid on jobs. And another thing to think about is dog walking because the skills are good with animals, athletic, your assets, a computer, a printer, your time, about half an hour a day. And these are just a few of the things that you should consider when looking for a job. And remember, you can go to my website, and that website is the number one, personalcareercoach.com. And you can get individual coaching, or you can take part in a group or take some courses that I have online. That can help you with considering what it is that you can do as a side hustle. 